in today's video we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern taking a look at some pretty major storms around the nation especially for the central states the western states going to see plenty of snowfall and a lot of this will move into the east not as much as those other portions of the country but we will see a general increase in the activity in the east which i couldn't really say the past few months so more precipitation is on the way for most folks around the nation. Stronger cold fronts. This could bring some cooler temperatures. Nothing too crazy as far as cold, but slightly below normal temperatures or near normal temperatures that are going to really snap those above normal temperatures. So it will still be a 10, 20 degree swing, but it's not going to be like in the below average direction, if that makes sense. It's going to be much closer to average. We will be looking at our tropical cyclone that now is very, very likely to develop, looking at the spaghetti model guidance, the intensity guidance, and what the National Hurricane Center has to say at the end of this video. So let's just dive into things. Take a look here at what is expected, and we see that by this afternoon as I move us forward, uh, what we're going to see is one of these major storms already taking place. 996 here between New Mexico, Colorado, and Oklahoma. And this low is pretty interesting. We have a lot of thunderstorms and showers firing up out ahead of it as we have this kind of strong northerly flow, very typical out front of a stronger low. And we have this snowfall and in, in showers for the lower elevation areas diving southward to the west of that low. So again, fairly common for this time of year to see this type of system. It is a little bit on the intense side. We do have a secondary low to the north as well, 1004. So we'll have to see what happens with that. As we move towards Monday afternoon, what happens is our secondary low kind of moves to the east, and so does our primary low, kind of the southeast here. What we're going to see is that over time, this second or the the low to the south is going to really, really take over once again. We're going to see that secondary low basically break up, and we're going to see this one flow to the north where that one is. So I know it's a little bit confusing, but that is the overall kind of look of things. Again, thunderstorms on the front end of this thing, some snowfall in the back end here for the four corner states, where we're expecting monstrous amounts of snowfall, by the way. The jet stream looks about just like this. So we see a strong ridge over a lot of the kind of Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley. And for the East Coast, it's a little less intense for these areas, but we'll, we'll do a little arrow. There is some warmer air there, but the more extreme amounts of above normal temperatures is going to be here in the peak of this ridge. Now, there is a storm also onshore for Western Canada. This is bringing some impacts down for the Northwestern states like Washington and Oregon with some rainfall and snowfall as well. Let's take this towards Tuesday on November 5th. And we see this Southern low once again takes hold basically where that other low was 998 here with the cold front swinging underneath warm front out ahead of things. And it becomes a lot more of a classic look here. We see the warm air surging underneath that warm front cooler air again, near normal to slightly below normal temperatures moving in behind this cold front here uh, overall is the look. And we would be watching still for some thunderstorms in this pocket of cold front so that is definitely still a possibility some snowfall for the northern rockies also the cascades is taking place here at this point as well by tuesday on the 5th by wednesday here on november 6th what we see is some snowfall diving southward for the rockies and four corner states here uh, definitely taking hold we do see this kind of southeast flow uh, through the east coast taking place and this is allowing for some showers and warmer weather to take place in there as well we do see our our tropical cyclone there over far western cuba let's take it a step further towards thursday on november 7th i can't believe we're already talking this far into november and we're going to be to meteorological winter before we know it by the time it's december 1st so i mean absolutely unbelievable we do see snowfall and rainfall respectively for the four corner states and the southern uh, planes there guess which one's seeing the snowfall and which one's seeing the rainfall you'll never guess but we do see a thousand and one here for this tropical low across the gulf and we do still see showers and thunderstorms across the southeast but overall getting a little bit quieter here for the moment friday here things are picking up we are probably going to see a low develop in between this area of storminess on the south central states probably going to move northward as well so we'll watch for that closely thunderstorms and showers for the plains more wintry weather here for the four corner states and our tropical low is relatively weak but it is centered over the middle of the gulf of mexico i think the 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 possibility is definitely there for a tropical storm 
Uh, category 1 hurricane can't be ruled out. Uh, we are seeing some models suggest that it gets pretty close to that, but I think Tropical Storm is the more likely outcome with this one. Obviously, we're very, very late in the season, so... Uh, you know, development won't be as crazy as it would have been, you know, two months ago with other storms that we've seen come out of the Gulf of Mexico. As we keep going, I want to take us towards Saturday afternoon on the 9th. We see this storm kind of just gets eaten up on the southern end of this kind of funnel boundary here, extending down from our low that is now developed over the central plains. Rainfall on the eastern end, but for the Rockies, some heavy snowfall once again, Colorado and Wyoming from that low pressure system. Again, thunderstorms, showers, and even wind now as there is a tropical component will be a possibility in this southern corridor of this storm. Look at Canada. We have pretty major lows up there uh, over the Hudson Bay and over western Canada. So a lot of your more major storms are way up to the north like this by that Saturday the 9th time frame. Sunday on the 10th, though, we do see this storm developing quite uh, intensely. 996 here, a bit of a warm front extending there. Uh, to the north of that one, and a cold front is underneath. It's just not that intense as far as the cold air. We do see some cooler air, again, pretty marginal, maybe bringing near normal conditions to these areas. Thunderstorms and showers can't be ruled out in this corridor of this storm. By Monday on November 11th, we see that this low, low is now over eastern Canada. Cold front is stretching down all the way to the Gulf states here, so thunderstorms and showers can't be ruled out. And now we have a little bit of a ridge over the west and a bit of a trough heading towards the east. This is the most decent look we've seen in a while. So if we do get something like this, this could be your first opportunity at significantly cold air here in the east of Canada and in the eastern United States, especially if we continue this eastern progression of this frontal boundary and the warmth kind of uh, gives up here and leaves. If this warmth equally pushes back, uh, we could see this cold try to just kind of slide over and avoid that area entirely. So there's a couple opportunities there. Again, it's almost 10 days out, so take it with a grain of salt. But interesting look. And we do actually do see the warm win out on this particular model run. We see that this pushes back. That cold kind of slides back up to the northeast. We do have another cool down that looks like it wants to kind of move in eventually. But we'll have to see if that one can win out or if the warm is going to kind of beat it again. We do see some snowfall over the Rockies once more, a weaker low over south central Canada, which could develop a cold front that brings it all eastward. Something like this could be the look. We'll have to wait and see, but showers and thunderstorms remain for the southeast. Again, promising sign of more activity and overall more precipitation that is much needed uh, coming up soon. Here's the total precipitation again. Uh, slightly uh, kind of going down for the northwest. So this has been a very active area, but I am starting to see this kind of strip away at some of the expected precipitation and look a little less intense up there. Definitely the highlight of the nation here is the south central states up through the Great Lakes. We do see that this is kind of an explosive area of precipitation uh, throughout these areas. And we do see stronger lows through here, some Gulf energy, a lot going on that brings these inches of precipitation and likely far above average precipitation. Also, the southeast does pretty well. Uh, it's mostly still the mid-Atlantic and northeast where we're waiting to see if some precipitation can move in. Uh, we're in a serious uh, lull of, of precipitation for these areas, breaking records in some spots. So definitely uh, been very quiet. For the anomalies, now look, the northwest is below average as far as precipitation, so I guess I was right there. We do see above average for a lot of these kind of central areas like the, the plains and especially the Midwest and uh, south central United States. We're seeing inches above average. The darker greens is about an inch above average. The blues is about, you know, two to five inches above average over the next 10 days. Definitely a whole lot expected. Even the southeast here, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, getting quite a bit as well. There's just a dry area here across the Midwest and Northeast, or yeah, uh, Mid-Atlantic, mid better yet, and Northeast, as you can see. As we take a look at the total snowfall, uh, nothing really expected for any of the North Central states, uh, Great Lakes, or the Northeast. No surprise there as warmer temperatures prevail. But the Cascades, we do see... Um, anywhere from about, you know, six to 10 inches up to a multiple feet there for the Washington Cascades. The Northern Rockies is again, anywhere from about, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 inches, but the Southern Rockies, especially New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming, we're looking at feet of snowfall for a lot of these mountain ranges. We're talking two, three, four feet, maybe more. So a whole lot of snowfall is expected for those kind of four corner states in, in the Southern Rockies overall. Very, very intense look. 
Here is your temperature pattern. And on the European model, we get this cooldown for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic that gets pushed out by a massive warm-up. That sticks around. Again, here is one of those kind of cold fronts. Again, just near normal to slightly below normal temperatures moving in. It does, you know, bring you from those 15 to 20 degrees above normal back down to near normal. So it still is a, you know, 10, 15, 20 degree temperature swing, but it's not taking you below average. It's just taking you out of the above average. Uh, so there's a big difference there. Uh, we, we see that kind of marginally uh, warm air stick around. So again, still 10, 15 degrees colder than it was. But we do see another major warm up before we get a little bit more of a substantial cool down here for a lot of these states. But again, it's near normal to slightly below normal. Nothing crazy. It's mostly if this area here, there is a low kind of located here. If a cold front can develop a warm front here and we can basically pull this all eastward here. Uh, that would be what would bring a big time pattern change, but we're not seeing that on these models yet. Here's the GFS model again, cooldown right now, warm up, some marginal cooldowns on the way. There we see the Northeast, especially we warm back up, but here comes a pretty big cold front from the West. Look at that around the 12th, 13th, 14th time frame. Uh, and we kind of keep the East Coast pretty cool for the most part. Meanwhile, the West is still very cool as well. So it's really these kind of South Central and Midwest people that really uh, struggle to get the cold air at all. The East Coast hanging on to some of this cooler air after that like 12th, 13th, 14th time frame. Very interesting. Here's the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook. And we do see uh, that we have a 90% chance of development now over the next seven days for this one in the Southern Caribbean. It's one that I've been calling for to develop for probably over 10 days now. We do see over the next 48 hours that we do have an 80% chance of development. So the odds are that this one develops over the next two days. If not, the days following, uh, it's an even higher chance. Almost certain that this develops according to the National Hurricane Center. We have Tropical Storm Patty up there in the very far North Atlantic. Interesting enough. And then we have a 10% chance of development here to the north of Cuba and to the north of Haiti. Doubtful that this one develops though with the current outlook. Now, as we move on to the intensity guidance, as you can see, a couple of these want to flirt with category one. We even have one going crazy up to a category four. I would completely disregard that as that is a clear, serious outlier there. But we do see a couple flirting with this area here, which would put it in, in the, the threat of becoming a category one at some point. The majority of these take this to a midpoint uh, tropical storm before dropping off at landfall. So uh, very interesting. In all likelihood, we will see a tropical storm out of this one, and there is a very slim possibility that we do see a Category 1 hurricane. The odds of a Category 1 hurricane is about equal to the, you know, not seeing a tropical storm odds. So um, in between is far more likely here, as you can see. As we take a look at the spaghetti model guidance, this is kind of like your overall uh, every single model involved here. We see it does expect the track pretty close to Jamaica there over Cuba. And then we get some interesting uh, discrepancies. Some of these are far south like this and, and taking it maybe more towards Texas, Louisiana. Uh, a few of these hitting Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And then we get quite a few uh, heading towards the big bend of Florida here. So that is kind of your current trajectory. And I mean, if you were to draw a cone, you see it's pretty narrow and then it widens out like they all always do. Something like this would be uh, my idea right now as far as what the models are showing. So we will be watching this very, very closely. Uh, definitely. Keep up to date with our videos. We're going to update you guys on this tropical system, the temperature pattern, our major storms around the nation. So be sure to stay tuned for all of that. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.